the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to St. David's morning worship for the fourth Sunday in Lent. Please join with us in the singing and prayers as you are able that we can worship together today. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect Prayer for this Sunday. Steadfast God, you reach out to us in mercy. When we rebel against your holy call and walk in disobedience, soften our hearts with the warmth of your love so that we may know your Son alive within us, redeeming us, and raising us up into your eternal presence. Amen. And we sing together now the Kyrie Eleison. readings for this Sunday are from Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 to 9, Psalm 107 verses 1 to 3 and 17 to 22, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10, and John chapter 3 verses 14 to 21. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of Christ. speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. The Israelites were sure God would let them perish, 
as they traveled with Moses in the desert. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. That miserable food was the bread-like substance, manna, that God made appear daily. The Israelites weren't really going to perish, for God always provided what they needed, even though it might not be exactly what they wanted. They were inclined to look back with some very rosy-colored glasses to that time in Egypt. They remembered the meat, the delicious food, but conveniently forgot that they were perishing from bitterly hard slave labor. God judged their complaining by sending poisonous serpents who bit people and caused them to die. Now, some truly were perishing indeed. The people confessed to Moses who prayed to God to save them. According to God's instructions, Moses made a serpent out of bronze and put it upon a pole. Whenever a serpent bit someone, that person could look at the bronze serpent and live. The temptation to distrust God's care and God's promises began way back with Adam and Eve, in fact. In the creation story, a serpent takes on the voice, becomes the voice of Satan, the accuser. The serpent lies to Eve about God, tempting her to believe that God does not really mean what God says. And ever since then, humans have been tempted to trust in something other than God. The scriptures call these things idols. Idols of wood and stone, idols of success, power, money, comfort. These idols, these false gods, cannot deliver life and instead cause us to perish in body, mind, or spirit. St. Paul puts it rather bluntly. You were dead through following the course of this world, following the desires of flesh and senses. Yet from the beginning, from the moment God created the world and called it good, God has desired for humanity to have life, divine life, eternal life, a forever relationship of mutual love and self-giving with God. Because God so loves the world, God gave his only son so that everyone who trusts in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. God did not send Jesus to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Saved from perishing, saved from worshiping things that do not give life, health, wholeness in body, mind, and spirit. And St. Paul calls this wonderful act of God the immeasurable riches of grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation, but Jesus' presence creates a crisis, a critical moment, a choice, which in itself is a judgment upon humanity. Jesus says, this is the judgment that light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. When the sunlight streams in the window, I see very clearly the dust and dirt in my house. So also the gaze of God is like a bright light shining into the dark corners of our lives. Some will not come out of the darkness for fear of the light. Yet Jesus' gaze is a gaze of love 
a love that purifies hearts and sets us free to be loved and to love in return. God's promise, Jesus' assurance, is that whoever trusts in his love will be filled with divine life. St. Paul says, But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. As Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes, that means trusts in him, may have eternal life. To be lifted up refers to Jesus lifted up on the cross, raised up from the dead, and then raised up into the nearer presence of God in heaven. Jesus came down from heaven at his birth and returned to heaven at his ascension, opening a way for us to God. To be with God is to experience eternal life. For God is the source of all life, never-ending life, life that begins here in our birth and now and continues now with Jesus. So the question is, will we allow God's love to shine in every corner of our lives? Will we trust Jesus' abiding love for us and love him in return? God's desire is not to condemn, but to save all from perishing, be it in mind, body, or spirit. And Jesus invites us into a relationship of mutual love and self-giving. A relationship that brings healing, wholeness, freedom, purpose, and meaning to our lives. It's risky. For God's love might just change our lives as we live out God's purposes for us in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray for the Church of God throughout the world. We pray for Jane, our Bishop, Alex, our Dean, for the nomination and search committees, the parish of St. Thomas, Sherwood Park, and for the parish of Mubanga in Bouye Diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have power and influence, and for all who govern the nations, for those who make decisions for our health and well-being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the powerless, for all victims of famine and war, and for all who strive for justice and peace. In our diocese, we pray for the continuing work of reconciliation and healing with members of the Frog Lake First Nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the afflicted and sorrowful and for all who need our prayers, for those in hospital, those awaiting test results, those suffering from COVID, those who are alone, and those who are dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us remember before God those who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, and let us pray for comfort for those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, through the self-offering of your Son, you have filled our lives with your presence. Help us in our sufferings and trials, and strengthen us in our weakness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we sing together our Lord's Prayer. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of mercy transform you by his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.